Hello, everyone, and good evening. My name is Amanda Brayson, and I work on the programming team here at TIFF, and it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to this evening's screening of Humoresque with Karina Longworth. Before we begin, we would like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit, the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat, and we are so very grateful to work in this community. On behalf of TIFF, I would also like to thank our lead sponsor, Bell, and our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal, Paris, and Visa, and TIFF's Cinematex public supporters, the Ontario Media Development Corporation, and the Canada Council for the Arts. As a charitable organization, we would also like to thank our donors and members for making TIFF's year-round programming, educational, and community outreach initiatives possible. Tonight's talk is a part of our ongoing retrospective, A Woman Possessed, the films of Joan Crawford on now until December uh, 23rd, sorry. For more information about the films in the series, please visit tiff.net. Now, tonight's guest, Karina Longworth, will also be joining us for an in-depth talk on Henry King's Wait Till the Sun Shines Nelly, and that is tomorrow, um, Monday, November 19th. Um, tickets are still available for this event, very, very few, and there will also be a book signing afterward as well, so something very special. And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our guest for this evening's event. Karina Longworth is the creator, writer, and host of You Must Remember This, a popular podcast exploring the secret and forgotten history of 20th century Hollywood. Since launching in 2014, You Must Remember This has turned a contemporary feminist lens on topics ranging from the Manson murders and the blacklist to Joan Crawford's rise and fall and the parallel careers of Boris Karlov and Bela Lugosi. A former film editor of LA Weekly and critic for The Village Voice, she is the author of four books, including Meryl Streep, Anatomy of an Actor, and Hollywood Frame by Frame. Now, please join me in welcoming Karina Longworth. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. I'm really excited that you get to see this movie. I have some notes on my phone. I'm not like playing a game or texting. So I'm just, that's what I have going on here. Um, they invited me to come introduce this movie because I have this podcast called You Must Remember This, and I did a whole series about Joan Crawford. But I also did an episode about the other star of this film, John Garfield, as part of a series I did on the Hollywood Blacklist. So I wanted to just um, introduce you to both of these actors a little bit and tell you why it's exciting to see them in this movie. Um, the basic story of Humoresque is that Garfield plays a working class guy who becomes a great violinist, and Joan Crawford is the rich, slightly older woman who, pers who pursues a somewhat transactional relationship with him with tragic consequences. It was the first Joan Crawford film to be released after Mildred Pierce, for which she won the Best Actress Oscar. And if you know a single Joan Crawford film, you probably know Mildred Pierce. And if you have a single image of what Joan Crawford looked like, it's probably as she looked in Mildred Pierce with the severe lipstick and the, the prominent cheekbones and the broad shoulders. Um, but if you know Crawford's films of the late 20s and the early 30s, you know that her beauty and, and what she projected when she was younger was somewhat different. It was softer. Um, and even when she played characters that were um, the harder edge, like the scheming villain and George Cukor's The Women, her screen persona was more approachable. But from Mildred Pierce on, she often played characters who seemed indomitable, even when they were vulnerable or in danger. And Humoresque is interesting to me because it's clear that even though it was released after Mildred Pierce, it was made before Mildred Pierce had really had an impact on Crawford's performance style and how she was perceived. And you can kind of see the younger Joan Crawford sort of flickering within the character and kind of ultimately fading out over the course of the movie. I find it to be a more emotional film than Mildred Pierce, and I think it's a more interesting Joan Crawford performance than the one she won the Oscar for. Um, moving on to a few words about John Garfield. He was a Jewish kid from the Lower East Side of New York with a chip on his shoulder, and there hadn't really been anybody like him in movies um, up to the point where he became a star in the late 1930s. Um, he came to Hollywood after having been part of New York's group theater, which was the sort of leftist incubator of what would come to be called method acting. And there Garfield had met Clifford Odets, the playwright who wrote the screenplay for Humoresque. Odets worked a lot of Garfield's real personality and his real personality conflict into the movie. 
like his character, Garfield was torn between the urban world that he came from and a rarefied sphere of culture and wealth. And like his character, Garfield had trouble saying no to sex, even when it was clearly a bad idea. One thing that's fascinating about this movie is that Garfield is really the ingenue, and much of the movie is shot through with Crawford's, character lust, Crawford's character's lustful gaze at him, rather than the other way around, as we're more used to seeing things in Hollywood movies of this era. So keep an eye out for the scene where he lies back on a couch wearing nothing but a white terry cloth bathrobe, because it's pretty special. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Please enjoy.